Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the parent air oil separator right here. So this is good for the 2004 to plus STIs and then it also works on the 2004 to 2014, I believe, WRXs. So it just takes a little bit of a different approach to it since it is a little different, but you'll have to read up on the differences inside the instructions. So today I'll be doing it on my 2005 STI here. And let's get started. So today I have my box right there, my hose clamps all organized, and then hose there, socket set. Alright, and I also went ahead and put in all the fittings onto the air oil separator before actually installing it, just because it'll make it a lot easier instead of trying to get behind there and try to get your wrench to put on these fittings. So I just went ahead and did that. Probably read the instructions about 20 times just so I actually made sure I'm actually doing everything right. And this is also the first engine mod I've been doing, so let's see how it goes. All right, so I would recommend before starting this, um, just to make sure your car is cool and make sure your cooling is cool as well, because I'm gonna be connecting every single fitting onto here, every line, just because it is recommended by parent and I want the maximum performance out of this thing. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna take off the intercooler here. I got a bolt there bolt there, take off the blow-off valve, take off this hose clamp and then the hose clamp down there for the charge pipe. And I also have to take that hose off because whoever installed my alarm system put it right where I need to take off my intercooler. So routing it back there. Alright, so I've got the top mount intercooler off. So what I'm going to be doing is taking off the breather hose because the way I'm routing it, it's going to not use the breather hoses and I'm just gonna replace those hoses and go straight into the oil separator so that's what that will happen if you see that that's exactly what you don't want inside your intercooler so that's what we're gonna be taking care of today all right so now I'm just gonna take this and mount it down in these two holes here and I also had to use a different screw because the one that they supplied didn't fit on my model so I found a screw that'll work in all right, so looking at this, uh, how's the best way to explain it? So here's the turbo, and then right next to it should be your, uh, I don't know what it's called, but there'll be a hose here with a little T right here. And then straight down is your crankcase vent. So that's what you wanna take out. You wanna take out this hose from here all the way down to the bottom. And this hose goes into your intake, I believe, just right under your throttle body. And I'm gonna be taking this off so I can get better access to that. So yeah, I'll go ahead and take this off and show you guys a little bit better. All right, so just took off the four bolts holding in the throttle body here. So as you look inside there, you can see some oil residue there and there. Obviously there was a lot of oil that was going through the intake, through the turbo, and throughout the whole engine. So that's not a good thing you don't want. So that's why we're installing this. Um, so yeah, the hoses that we're gonna take off is the one right next to the turbo right after this electrical connection here we'll just snip this clamp off at the bottom there goes into the crankcase vent we'll be taking that hose off as well and then the last hose that's connected is right here and we'll just take that hose clamp off and then we should have a little T section there we'll just go from there all right so I got this little tube section out of here so it was a little oriented like that and this was in the in the intake right there and then at the bottom there's a little about two inch hose still stuck in there you actually want to keep that in there because that's what you'll be fitting in a little y a y fitting in there so you actually want to keep that there but other than that this can come out but don't throw it away because you will need this part right here just so you don't have any boost leaks because if you don't have this it, it won't work all right so now i'm actually gonna bolt this right into the back there and then we will go from there all right so pretty much to install this little y section here you have to use one of the biggest clamps you have i believe it's a 27 millimeter so you just put that around the hose down there orient it that way and tighten it up all right so i got that fitting down there these are ready to go and so this, I also forgot to mention, you have to RTV seal this, so pretty much you want to get the orientation that you want for the bottom plate here, and then you have to open it about an eighth of an inch, 
and then put in the RTV sealant all the way around and then tighten her back up, clean it up, and she'll be good and she won't move, she won't leak, It'll be nice. So now I'm just gonna route this hose yeah. right to this connection here. And then you have to attach a hose clamp here and here, just two of the smallest hose clamps that you have. And then that'll be your oil return line. So you wanna try and make this as short as you can, but make sure it's not going uphill as well, so. All right, so just got the first fuel hose there. And then now all you have to take is a half inch tube from here and then put it right into this guy right on the side there another half inch 90 degree elbow as well all right so now we got our crankcase vent hose coming here so just add one of your I believe it's a number three clamp there and there on both ends and just make sure this doesn't really go near the turbo same with the oil feed line I have it a little off of the heat shield here but it's not touching so be good there and this doesn't really matter if it's going uphill because it's just gonna be air that's flowing through there. All right, so next thing that Perrin says to do is if you're gonna be attaching your coolant lines, pretty much you're just gonna take this hose off, attach a 516s to 516s male plastic adapter onto there, attach hose to it and put it to one of these fittings, doesn't matter, and then the other one will go from here into the fitting onto the throttle body. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. All right, I should have did this earlier, but inside of your little box here, you should have this little cap. So you want to put this right onto the plastic connection right there where you took the hose off from the under the throttle body and the crankcase vent. So there'll be a little fitting on there. We'll just slide this plastic cap on there. And then I believe just zip tie it on there and she should be good. All right, so here's your throttle body. And then just off to the right hand side when you're looking into the engine bay, there's that hose there, just take that off. Just when you do, just make sure to have a rag by you. So just make sure coolant doesn't go everywhere just in case, you never know. All right, so as you can tell, I got my coolant hoses hooked up. They're just the bottom two ports right next to the oil drain there so pretty much the throttle the body is right here there's a hose that comes off here this was the OEM hose so you take that off you put a 516 male male connector here with your OEM clamp on that side and then hose clamp there hose clamp there and then this one just runs straight into the air oil separator and that one just comes straight into this which goes back down into the system. So that's the setup they are recommending. So I went with that. Um, I also, well, I did run it under my blow off valve there. And I also ran this around my crankcase vent hose there. Just cause I kind of wanted to avoid the turbo just cause it is coolant and I want to try and keep it as cool as possible while maintaining good performance, so. So also on the coolant lines, I use the heater hose right here, the uh, 516 as well. And then the oil drain is the uh, fuel hose, I believe, so. All right, so now you got two hoses where you took off earlier. You got one here attached to the breather hoses on the top mount intercooler, and then you had one here. So pretty much um, you can put, a, put an adapter in there and run your hose to those two ports there. Same thing on this side, just one through there, it doesn't really matter. And then that'll work. Or what Perrin recommends, which I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna remove this hose altogether down to the head vent on both sides and then run them directly into the air oil separator. All right, so just on the driver side here, I have to take off the window washer fluid here. Just unplug this plug right here. Take this cord off the bottle there. And then there would be two hoses that are into the crankcase. This is the one that you need to take out. It's the one on the left. And then that's what the hose should look like. So now you just attach your hose there. And then when you're routing these hoses, you don't want to go over the turbo or the downpipe because it's just going to be hot. Probably what I'm going to do is make it very simple. Just run it straight across the top of the intake manifold there. Route it 
into the oil separator there. I think that'll be easiest and away from all the hot parts in the engine. All right, so we're making pretty good progress. So pretty much had one of my vent hoses coming along the top here, right in front of the inner cooler, and then the intake. And then right down here, yeah, that's where I put it in. That's where it has to go. And then on the other side, just had to remove my intake. And then it's just running from the bottom here and down to the front again. I tried mounting it through here where the OEM hose was. It wouldn't work because down here it would kink and I don't want it to kink, so. Uh, yeah, All right, so pretty much the last thing we have to do is, okay, so essentially, the port down here under the throttle body is gonna have a hose coming up here into your PCV valve. Uh, that's that little valve that you took off your car earlier. And then it's gonna be pointing this way, I believe. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know. And then this is going to connect to a Y, also connected to the PCV valve, and then a hose connecting to this hose. I'm just going to cut it right there, so a nice, nice line right to the oil separator. So I'll get that done and show you guys. Alright, so to find the PCV valve, it's on the very first tube that you actually took off in the Y right here, so you have to unbolt that from there. And then this metal piece is your PCV valve. So you need that in order to keep your boost levels for the car. All right, so I pretty much had the hardest time getting this thing off. So as you can tell, I destroyed the thing. So first of all, I tried to use a breaker bar on it on the ground, and then it just broke the two ends off of it. Then I took a vice grip and then tried, but it wasn't working. It was just ripping. So then I just took a hammer, chisel, destroyed it, and then took a vice grip around that brass ring, I guess, and then finally got it off. So this is what you want, this is your vent valve. And then we'll put it on the car, we'll get some boost. All right, so there's an adapter inside the box. All you have to do is just bolt that on there with some Teflon tape, put it as tight as you can because you don't want a boost leak out of this. So now we're just gonna show you how to run it through the car. All right, so we are finally finished. So pretty much that tube was going this way, cut it right here, put a half inch adapter right there, got some hose, straight into a Y, that's what I was talking about. And then this side, go straight to the top of the air oil separator. This is all half inch tube, by the way. And then another half inch tube going under this into the PCV valve. So this is your brass fitting that you actually get with the kit. This is your PCV valve, so it has to be on this side. Good thing is, this is 3 8 I believe. So you can't really mix the two up. And then she's just connected down there. So it looks like it's all connected. So there you go. I'm gonna throw this all together and show you guys what it looks like. Alright, so this is the final product. Everything's together. All the lines went in pretty nice. And I also got rid of the breather rail on there too. So that's a big let off. Um, from this. This is probably the last time I'm going to be installing my intercooler. It really sucks. Next time I'm going to be doing a uh, front mounted intercooler. I'm not going to be touching that thing again because it took me literally about 45 minutes just to get that thing in. So, yeah. Other than that, we'll just start her up. Yeah. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this install of the Parent Hill 